Welcome back to the program. Joining me now is the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Treasurer, thanks so much for your time. Just to clarify, are you and the RBA Governor on the same page when it comes to economic policy? Indeed we are. We totally agree with the RBA Governor that it's not up to monetary policy to do all the heavy lifting. Fiscal policy has an important role to play. That's why we laid out our economic plan in the budget on April the 2nd for a stronger economy. And that was in three parts, Kieran. First, there was the strategy to get back to surplus, to deliver the first surplus in more than a decade. That's non-negotiable. We will deliver that surplus as promised. Secondly was the pro-growth strategy, which involved tax cuts, both short-term relief, but also long-term structural reform. That's passed the parliament. They'll be very significant for the economy, as well as the $100 billion pipeline of infrastructure spending and the 80,000 new apprentices. And then the third part of the budget was the social dividend that you get from a strong economy, namely record spending on schools, on hospitals, on mental health support, support for our carers, a whole range of areas, including aged care. That's what we laid out in the budget and that's what we will faithfully implement. And we built that budget in the knowledge that the economy was facing some of the challenges that it does right now. Yeah, it's that second point, though, where you talk about a pipeline of investment where you look at what the RBA governor said in the last week and it, his language is much more, well, it seems more urgent. He says, especially with interest rates at record lows, it's appropriate to, thinking about, to be thinking about further investments. That reference to rates being so low now, he's talking about the spare capacity in terms of infrastructure, he's urging you to do more. Well, we have a major infrastructure spend, and to be fair, Kieran, he was talking about governments, namely state as well as federal, investing in infrastructure. And in their most recent statement from the RBA, when they recently reduced rates, they did say the increased spending on infrastructure was actually offsetting some of the challenges we're seeing in other parts of the economy. We're working with the states to ensure that these projects are shovel-ready. And many of these projects are nation-building projects that have been on the drawing board for half a century or more. And I'm talking about, obviously, Snowy 2.0, which is a big energy project, but I'm also talking about um, the Air Melbourne Airport rail link, which uh, Victorians have been waiting for for half a century, as well as the second airport uh, for Sydney. Uh, and again, these are all major projects that will boost the productive capacity of the economy, therefore not only good in the short term for job creation, but in the long term for economic growth. You and the Prime Minister have said this is the year of the surplus. You've again this morning said it's non-negotiable. But the Governor, by saying that interest rates are at record lows, isn't he saying to governments, now's the time to borrow, in fact? Well, you've got to get the balance right, because one of the key... Uh, fundamental values that we as uh, Liberals and Nationals sign up to is that the next generation should not pick up the, the tab for the current generation. Namely, you have to be prudent, responsible economic managers. And if it wasn't for uh, the success of the Howard and Costello years in paying back labour debt, then we wouldn't have had the flexibility to respond to the economic downturn when it came. Now, Australia's net debt to GDP uh, take into account state and federal governments is around 20 per cent. Now, that is a fraction of what you see as the debt burden in the US and the UK, which is around 80 per cent, or in Japan at over 150 per cent. And that good economic scorecard needs to be continually worked on. That's why we're showing the discipline around our spending to ensure it's targeted and not wasteful. And that's why we'll continue to see more people in jobs as a result of the policies that we're putting in place. And that has led to the lowest number of working age Australians uh, as a proportion of the overall population being on welfare in 30 years. They are significant achievements and that's a result of getting that balance right in terms of fiscal and monetary policy. And there will be a short-term stimulus, we know, with the tax, uh, the rate cut, but also the tax cuts. How many, how many taxpayers have already received the tax return payments, that $1,080? Well, over 650,000, as of yesterday, had put in their tax return. That number would even be 
higher today, um, and that is a big jump on the previous year. So people are keen to get their, their tax return. Um, we'll be going, myself and the Assistant Treasurer, Michael Suka, will be going uh, to, to meet with the ATO Commissioner later this morning and to see how they're processing um, these uh, these tax returns, they can do that very quickly and the money will be flowing as early as this week to Australian households. And more than 10 million Australian households will get up to $1,080. Just yesterday, we were in Croydon South meeting uh, with a, a worker who's who's on uh, around $60,000 herself and her husband is also earning under $90,000. Well, their household will get $2,000. $160 and she's going to use that to, to do some ho um, home repairs and a few other things and that will stimulate the economy as well. So this will make a real difference, $8 billion into the economy as a result of these tax cuts together with, as you say, the rate cuts which are significant as well as some of the changes mm. APRA has made uh, to the prudential regulation uh, which would also, will also help the flow of credit out there in the economy. Employers this week are saying that they want more clarity in terms of the workplace system. Uh, Christian Port is undertaking a review over the next six to nine yes. months. Do you see there's some low-hanging fruit in this space where you can legislate before the 2022 election? Well, obviously, you know, our priority is the Ensuring Integrity Bill because we want to see... Um, those officials and those unions that break the law, indeed break it repeatedly, um, we want to see them face the full consequences of that because that's not good for the economy, but that's also you know, not good uh, for the reputation of the construction sector. Um, so we want to get that bill through and, and obviously we um, are talking to the relevant parties on that. But Christian Porter is undertaking this review with the caveats that the Prime Minister set out in his speech in Perth just a few weeks ago, namely that any changes will ensure that in, uh, workers' entitlements are protected, any changes will be evidence-based and any changes will ensure a stronger economy. They're our key caveats okay. uh, to changes in this space. On the uh, deeming rates for the, the part yeah. pension, has the government been too slow to move in this space leaving part pensioners worse off given the last time the deeming rate was set was 2015. We've had a number, not just the last couple, but five rate cuts since then. Well, it's important to understand, Kieran, that uh, this applies to not just money that is in the bank, the deeming rates. It actually looks at the returns from a whole suite of financial assets. And if you look at ASX 200 uh, holdings, um, that has been on average up about 12% through the year, so it's had a very, uh, through a very strong result. Uh, you've also seen uh, share, uh, returns for superannuation accounts being strong as well as managed funds. Yes, bank deposit uh, returns are, are not, um, have not been going up as interest rates have been coming down, but that's why we're seriously looking at this through the ERC process and we understand that it affects okay. about one in four uh, pensioners. Well, is it time to put some arm's length between ministerial discretion and the deeming rate, maybe link it officially to the, the cash rate as set by the RBA? We believe we've got a proper process in place uh, and the minister continues to, to review it uh, as appropriate. But as I said, it applies to a suite of assets, not just bank deposits, but we do recognise uh, since March 2015 when the deeming rates were last changed by then Minister Morrison, uh, we have seen interest rates come down by one and a quarter percent. So that's why we're having a good look at it now. A couple of quick ones to wrap up. Labor signalling it's going to scrap its negative gearing ap approach and its franking credits plan. You'd, you'd welcome that. And do you think that in terms of negative gearing, that will provide another shot in the arm for the property sector? Well, we don't really know from day to day what Labor's position is. Just yesterday, Anthony Albanese, ad hoc albo, as he's become known, uh, was out there saying that the policies had been scrapped on negative gearing and the retirees tax. And then just moments later, he had to clarify saying, oh, that's his inclination, but he hadn't even taken it to shadow cabinet. And I, su I suppose Jim Chalmers is the shadow treasurer has been kept in the dark on this issue because he had said that he was, quote, proud and pleased of Labor's retirees tax and housing tax. 
had taxes, and he had said that Labor's $387 billion of dollars of higher taxes that they took to the election was a courageous decision. So the Shadow Treasurer has said it's courageous for Labor to take higher taxes to the Australian people. Anthony Albanese is now jumping from one position mm. to another, not even consulting his Shadow Treasurer and Shadow Cabinet. So we really don't know what their position is. But what we have seen in recent weeks since the election was that the Labor Party has not um, heard what the Australian people have said. He has not heard that the Australian people have said they're in favour of lower taxes, not higher taxes, and Labor putting an obstacle every single day in the way of our tax cuts just showed you they have, they will be, and they um, are the party of higher taxes. And last, uh, last issue I want to get your thoughts on, the, the US-China trade negotiations. We know that there was a truce agreed to at the G20 recently. Do you see room for middle powers like Australia to be engaging with the likes of Indonesia, Japan and others more assertively to ensure a rules-based trading system continues? Because if the US and China do a deal, that's going to be outside of the WTO framework and that will have big implications for other exporters like our ourselves. Well, our message on the trade issues has been consistent and it has been the same publicly as it has been privately. And again, the Prime Minister made a major speech ahead of the G20 on this and Simon Birmingham has also uh, spoken regularly on this. We are great beneficiaries of a rules-based trading system. Uh, we want the WTO to be stronger and to be more relevant for today, and that's why we supported extending its remit to take into account e-commerce as well as, you know, ensuring that its dispute mechanisms are working as appropriate. With one in five Australian jobs, Kieran, connected to trade, and with China being a number one trading partner and the United States a number one investor, we are great beneficiaries from the world trading um, system. So we'll continue to make the case for free trade, uh, for transparent open-based trading systems and rule-based trading systems. Um, and when it comes to uh, the next, uh, you know, agreement that we can hopefully sign, we've made it very clear that looking at a, uh, a, a comprehensive um, regional agreement that involves India, ASEAN, um, some of our other major trading partners, um, RCEP it's known as, 16 nations, one third of global trade, that would be in Australia's interest. So we'll continue mm. to make the case for free trade agreements and strike free trade deals as we've done in the past. Treasurer, you've uh, got to go and see the Tax Commissioner. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Good to be with you.